So this is the uh, kind of uh, things which you already seen. The ARP iPhone A will be used uh, to list out all the uh, available uh, uh, mappings of IP as well as the MAC addresses. And if there any specific need to actually add a static IP, then we can use the command ARP space iPhone S along with the IP address as well as the MAC address mapping. Okay. And there is one more thing called uh, gracious ARP. This will be used in terms of whenever uh, a, a system, uh, let's say whenever you st uh, we start a system, the system itself uh, will send these kind of uh, uh, ARP packets to make that, let's say the IP address uh, uh, for this system is uh, 43.2, let's say. Okay, so I want to advertise that this IP address is already uh, allocated to a particular system, then the system will uh, uh, make this gracious ARP so that all the systems will be notified that uh, this particular system, uh, a particular MAC address already have a particular IP associated with this. Okay, so this will be used in uh, uh, like uh, uh, specific solutions like uh, finding out IP conflicts. Okay, where uh, a particular system can be identified with already existing IP using this gracious ARP packets. But we also need to be uh, very careful in terms of monitoring because if there are uh, more and more gracious ARPs in a particular network traffic, then uh, there may be chances uh, the attackers might also be using this kind of packets to actually uh, uh, map or uh, kind of uh, uh, to change the behavior in the ARP uh, scenario. So while monitoring, we also need to have a look on this uh, kind of gracious ARPs also. And as we said, every protocol is associated with uh, some vulnerabilities. Also, we have uh, vulnerabilities with respect to ARP spoofing, also, we have vulnerabilities with respect to ARP flooding. ARP flooding is a normal kind of uh, uh, simple uh, flooding of the MAC addresses uh, where it will uh, try to uh, uh, fill the buffer. Or we have ARP spoofing where the man in the middle attacks can be possible, uh, which will be showcased in the afternoon session. So I'm not going much into the kind of uh, things because anyway, we are going to discuss this in detail with the kind of uh, attacking. But how uh, this is how the uh, uh, ARP spoofing can be done where uh, two destinations can be spoofed with the same MAC address of the attacker. And while the uh, two victims are actually talking to each other, the attacker will be getting all the information using this kind of uh, attack. Okay. Uh, so this is with respect to ARP. And if you want to uh, delete all the kind of things, uh, we can use ARP space hyphen D uh, with the asterisk, it, which will delete all the kind of uh, manuals. And the uh, next more important uh, protocol is the IP protocol. So uh, this uh, belongs to the layer three protocol or the network layer in the TCP protocol suit. Uh, why we use IP is because uh, we need to have the uh, connectivity in terms of communication. And along with that, uh, we need to also have the end-to-end -end delivery of the datagrams or the packets that is uh, flowing in the uh, network. And the main uh, purpose of uh, IP or the uh, layer three protocols is also to uh, choose or to make the uh, routing path for the packets because now let's say uh, there are uh, i want to send some communication from a system a to system b now let's say this system may be in the same lan or it may be located on a different lan or it may be located on a different uh, city or it or, or on the internet altogether so i want to send this communication from this particular uh, 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 location to a different location but how the packet has to be traveled uh, from the sender to the destination. So there must be some kind of routing or a path to send fr uh, from this particular uh, location uh, for a, uh, from a system A to the other system B. So this kind of routing can also be done using the IP or the uh, layer three protocols. Okay. And also with respect to IP, particularly we have version four. Also we have uh, version one, two, three, but uh, TCP based on the TCP IP protocols as TCP is uh, come into uh, a limelight uh, with respect to version four. So the same nomenclature has been given to uh, IP also. And uh, five, uh, there is some experimental uh, uh, kind of version with respect to five. And now currently we have a uh, version six, uh, uh, which is also uh, uh, in, uh, prominent into the uh, kind of uh, networking. So this is how the IP addressing can also be used in terms of routing. Now let's say I want to send a communication uh, from a system of uh, 11 dot uh, uh, series to a particular system in 31.0 or 41.0. So this path can be decided based on the kind of routing protocols that are available at each uh, routers or uh, at each, each gateways, but uh, which uses the IP protocol in the background. 
Now let's say I want to send some communication from a uh, particular system uh, 1.1 to a particular system 31.0, then I have to pass through all these gateways or the routers which have the information uh, with the directly connected systems or which have information of the routing path on which the communication can be sent till it reaches the destination. So for this, we have a uh, kind of routes available in every system or in the every gateway or routers uh, where we have with respect to flags also, if, if we say uh, H, then it, it will be related to the uh, particular system along with the host flag. And if, I, uh, if we get the flags as G, that means it has to pass through a gateway, then it has to uh, reach the system. Again, on which interface it has to go. There may be uh, multiple interfaces on a single system. And again, on which route or on which interface the packet has to travel, that will also be decided with respect to the IP routing features. Now, when I uh, when we uh, come to the IP headers, now this is what the IP header will look like. The first one uh, we have the IP version, whether it is four or six. Then accordingly, we have the header length uh, because uh, IP also had uh, has the specific header length because we have some uh, uh, optional data also with respect to the IP, with respect to the kind of uh, routing path it has to take or the routing protocols. So, with respect to the da optional data, the uh, header length will be varied. But uh, the minimum header length will be 20 bytes. But in terms of raw packets, if we see, we'll get a number of uh, four or five. So accordingly, we have to multiply with respect to four bytes. And the other thing is the type of service. Uh, this is with respect to the kind of uh, application behavior. What kind of throughput that has to be allowed with this uh, kind of application that will be decided with respect to the type of service. And the next one is the total length of the entire packet that is flowing onto the wire. And uh, the important feature we have is with respect to fragmentation. The other important feature of the IP protocol is the fragmentation. Now let's say this fragmentation will come into picture when there is a uh, uh, there is a need to send the communication beyond the maximum transmission unit. Now let's say whenever we talk about the kind of uh, data in an Ethernet, the maximum transmission unit is only 1500 bytes. Now let's say there is some more communication or let's say there is a packet which is of 10 MB or 20 MB. Now this particular packet has to be sent over IP. Then this packet will be uh, uh, segmented or the, which will be fragmented into a number of multiple packets based on the MTU of the Ethernet. So this is how the fragmentation will be used and each packet will have its own uh, set of fragment ID. Accordingly, the destination will see uh, whether it is a single packet or there are multiple uh, packets that are uh, uh, there to uh, assemble it. So accordingly, the fragmentation will be used. And we have another uh, important feature called TTL, uh, this is called time to live. Uh, this is also very much important, uh, which is part of IP, because whenever we uh, create or generate a, a particular communication, that communication, uh, it, uh, there must be some sort of uh, 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 expiry on the packet that is generated, or else the packet can live uh, a, 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 uh, there will be, uh, it's like an immortal kind of thing on the uh, internet or on the network. So there should be some kind of mechanism to actually drop the packets. So this is where the time table will come into picture. So for every gateway, once it re uh, passes through the gateway, the packet or the TTL value will be decremented to one. So once this TTL will become zero, the packet will be dropped or it will not be forwarded onto the next uh, header or uh, onto the next node. And the next one will be the protocol because IP is layer three. Again, it should be pointing to uh, the upper layer protocols like the transport layer protocols, or we have another protocols with respect to ICMP, uh, which provides the feedback to the IP. So based on that, the protocol uh, will be varied. And also we have uh, some checksum with respect to the header and the source and destination IP addresses. Okay, so this is what we have discussed. Now let's say, uh, when we talk the same in terms of uh, uh, the Wireshark, we'll try to capture some packets. I'm uh, removing this filter. Okay, now let's say there are a lot of packets that are actually flowing on that. Uh, we'll try to pick up one particular packet, uh, a TCP packet, because anyway, TCP also has the IP uh, uh, packet as part of that. Okay, now we'll quickly move on to the IP uh, protocol. Now we can see here, now in the Ethernet header, it is pointing to IP version 4. In the earlier thing, it was 0806, which is pointing to ARP. 
Now it is pointing to 0, 0.0.0. 0, 0. That means it is pointing to the IP uh, packet. Now again in this IP, as we discussed, uh, we have this uh, version number. If it is 4, then it is IP version 4. And also we have a header length. Now you can observe in the raw packet, it is only a particular digit, which has to be multiplied by four bytes. Now, if it is here, it is six, then we have to multiply it with six bytes. That is six into four bytes. That will be the header length will be 24 bytes in that case. Sorry. So again, uh, we have a kind of uh, differential field or the type of service. If there is any specific application that is uh, requesting any kind of congestion or any kind of value, then uh, that will be notated here. And this is with respect to the total length of the entire packet. Uh, generally, we'll deduct the header length from this because already header length is mentioned here. We'll uh, uh, subtract this header length and we, uh, this, is, this will become the total length of the packet. And this is what the fragmentation ID we are talking about. So whenever uh, these three flags will be important in terms of fragmentation. Now we can he see here, in this particular packet, the don't fragment is set to one. That means it is a single packet. Now, if there is uh, the more fragment is set to one, that means then the destination machine uh, will be uh, checking this fragment offset along with the identification. So once this more fragments will become zero, so it will accumulate all the fragments uh, at the destination. And once it is uh, set to zero, then only the uh, all the fragments will be reassembled at the destination and that will be made as a single packet. Now again, uh, as we discussed the time to live, so generally uh, this time to live will also be used as part of the uh, information gathering or in terms of the uh, uh, reconnaissance or scanning phase because uh, based because the RFC says time to live has to be defined but a different operating system vendors uh, has chosen a different value for this TTL value. Now, in terms of Windows, uh, this TTL will be 128. If it is a Linux box, it will be 64. It will be, a, uh, in terms of networking devices, uh, the value will be 225. So, based on the value I see in the TTL, I can uh, uh, guess the operating system also, okay, whether it is a Windows or whether it is a Linux or whether it is a uh, 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 any kind of networking device or any kind of gateway device, okay? And the next level protocol uh, from which the IP is pointing to, whether it is a TCP protocol or whether it is a UDP protocol. Now, in, in terms of TCP, we can observe it is six. Now, let's say uh, we take any kind of a UDP packet. Now, you can see the protocol has changed to UDP. That means the hexadecimal value is 17. So, based on this, the value will be changed accordingly. And the next one will be the uh, source and destination IP addresses. Uh, of the uh, corresponding uh, target as well as the sender. So this is how the IP packet will be look like and the kind of header values that are associated in the IP.